Okay. When you're ready. My name is J. David Markham. I'm a chevalier of the Palm Académique, or the French Academic Palms, or you can call me Sir J. David if you wish. And tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about my Napoleon collection with my dear friend Cameron Riley from Australia. Cameron and I did the, the rather famous uh, Napoleon 101 podcast a number of years ago and uh, we've become very, very dear friends ever since. And I'm happy to have him uh, visit me in my Empire Palace in the Sky here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And we have another friend of ours in the background talking to somebody, so you'll have to forgive, forgive that. I'll send his daughter to tell him to go in the other room and, 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 and do that uh, there. Uh, so talking about my collection, it consists of a, a number of, of types of things and from a, a number of different periods. You have basically the, the, the consulate, which is when Napoleon first takes power, and you have the empire, which is when he becomes emperor starting in December of 1804. And you, you also uh, have the directory, which is the period just before Napoleon takes power. And I have, I have various things from, from all of those periods. The first thing I'll talk about a little bit is furniture, because this is arguably the newest part of my collection. In the room I'm sitting now, if you look around, you'll see major pieces of furniture from the consulate and the empire. For example, if you look over there, you will see a chest of drawers uh, that is from about 1800 and you'll see it has a very decided Egyptian motif or Egyptian theme to it. You can see the palm fronds, the, the Egyptian heads, and the Egyptian lion uh, poles. Uh, this is from the consulate period. Napoleon first took power right after his Egyptian campaign of 1798 and 1799. And after his campaign, there was Egyptian mania throughout all of Europe, and it went on, off and on, for uh, over a hundred years. Uh, and this period, this piece, rather, is a, a, a very, very fine example. If you look at the, the, the front of the piece, and you can see the grain, how the grain is, follows from, from one drawer to the other. This was a piece that was made almost certainly in Paris, and it's made of mahogany, or at least the veneer is mahogany. When you see things made of oak and other woods, they tend to be made outside of Paris, or at least outside of the, the uh, uh, major cities. I always like to joke that the television that sits on top uh, is actually the television that Napoleon used when he was in exile on St. Helena. But I have a hard time selling that idea. But then if you look a little further over there, next to my wife Emma and, and my friend Tony, who are getting up to leave because they don't want to be on TV, uh, you see a very different kind of chest. At first blush, it may look similar, but notice First of all, the columns on the side, they're very unusual. They're not full standalone <coughs> columns, but they are bifurcated, and that's extremely unusual. And also at the top of the columns above the crown, you will see, or above the capital, you'll see the swan, which is a symbol of Josephine, and it's three-dimensional, it sticks out. This is an empire piece but it's a very, very rare empire piece, something that you do not see very often. Now, coming back into this room, if you look at the chair where Cameron was just sitting, you'll see that that's also an empire chair with a certain Egyptian motif. You'll see the Egyptian head. You'll also see on top of the Egyptian head the, the rosette. And while this is not the original upholstery, to be sure, uh, this is probably very similar to the upholstery that would have originally been on that chair. The stripe 
was a common motif in empire and even consulate uh, upholstery. And if you look around the room, you'll see other kinds of things. As we go along later, I'll show you some more furniture. The other thing that you'll see here are various kinds of decorative arts. We have candlesticks, we have bronze statues, we, we, we have cl empire clocks, we have all sorts of things. Now, you're looking at this, this is actually a 19, probably 1960s clock, uh, celebrating more or less the 200th anniversary of his birth. Uh, but it's still very interesting. That, on the other hand, is from the 1850s. It's a reproduction of a Chaudet uh, 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 bust of, of Napoleon as, as first consul. And indeed, if you turn around behind you, Cameron, you will see, if you can see through the glare and so forth, a, a classic empire clock of Napoleon doffing his hat actually to Austrian prisoners of war. This is from a very famous engraving. And the candlesticks that you see there are, are consulate candlesticks. Very, very simple in design. Uh, Here's the view of David's window too, by the way. There is the CN Tower, the one time the tallest structure in the world, no longer now, but really quite, uh, quite an interesting place. Here we have <coughs> the, uh, a little bit of an Egyptian uh, collection, an Egyptian clock. Uh, here's Napoleon in Egypt. Here is a, a, an Egyptian uh, female pharaoh. And it turns out if you open this up, it's actually an inkwell. Quite an interesting piece. Here we have Napoleon famously on a camel. And of course the Battle of the Pyramids engraving up there. The table that they are sitting on is a classic console table and you'll notice here perforce the the columns are standalone you have the rosettes uh, there's a, a drawer here which is full of uh, all sorts of stuff uh, uh, we have uh, candlesticks here uh, with the sphinx uh, it's, it's really quite uh, interesting here we have an engraving of Napoleon returning in 1815 uh, for, you know, for the hundred days uh, after his exile in, in Elba. Uh, here we have a classic bust of Napoleon, uh, a, great, a, a great image of Julius Caesar here from, from the 19th century. No camera, you can't take it home with you. Uh, here, here is a, an interesting piece, this, this imperial eagle. One of my other passions in life is James Bond. And, and so I have the, the, the DVD Blu-ray collection of all of the James Bond movies. And one day we were, we were watching uh, A View to a Kill, which is you know where he's trying to destroy Silicon Valley and so on. And at one point, he's in this great chateau, which is supposedly a horse racing thing. It's actually the Chateau Chantilly in, in, in France. And there's a close-up of, of the bad guy's desk, Christopher Walken's desk. And it's got a few items on it. It's really cluttered like, like mine. And then we discover here is this eagle on the desk. Not an eagle like this eagle, but the actual eagle. And you can tell because the alabaster stand has very specific markings that are unique to that particular piece of stone. And you can't, you, you can't duplicate that, and why would you? Also, three of the four feet are exactly the same, but one in the back that you can't see very well is a replacement. And you could see that in the movie. So this is actually an empire eagle, imperial eagle, that was used in a James Bond movie. I will clutch this to my last dying breath. You know? It's just an amazing piece. Here we have a, 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 an empire a, a secretaire, which is essentially a desk. Uh, let's see if I can get it to open. There we go. And you can see what it looks like inside. And there are secret compartments. And oddly enough, there are some cognac 
glasses with a Napoleonic emblem on them. Uh, this is a, an absolute delightful piece. Like I say, hidden compartments and all sorts of other little goodies. Uh, over here, it's, it's a little hard for you to get to, but yeah, that's Napoleon's correspondence that you just sort of got a, a brief shot of there in an Empire uh, bookshelf, of course. And then here we have a classic example of, of an Empire uh, piece. The biggest noticeable thing about it is that the, the, the columns are standalone. And that is, that is the classic example of, a, of an Empire piece. The earlier pieces, the columns were built into the, the, the furniture itself. Here and also on the secretary, I should, should have pointed out, they, they are standing alone. So now we'll go to the dining room. And you'll see, first of all, the Empire chandelier. This is first Empire chandelier. Uh, there we go. The magic touch brings back all the lights. And we have a few little items of interest. We have two large candelabra uh, here. We have two smaller ones with the Egyptian motif here. The big ones are cannons. You'll see here's a, here's a, a fat little cannon and a cannonball. And then you have the Egyptian uh, ladies on each end. You have a, a First Empire centerpiece. And of course, some Bakra uh, period uh, uh, vases here. Now this is rare these days because we have the vases upright. We normally have them lying on their side because of the two kittens uh, that are going crazy from time to time and, and you know you have to be aware of, of, of issues with that. Uh, I could show you all sorts of, here's, a, here's a, another Empire clock. Uh, and here, and Cameron, you'll, you'll like this piece. If you can come over here, I'll pull it off the wall. And is the lighting okay for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, this is perhaps the ugliest Napoleon you've ever seen in your life. It's, it's, a, it's this a, a Dutch engraving. But I want you to notice, Alexander Bonaparte, the Borandering de Veld, il come, il creed, il overwon. What the heck is that all about? Alexander Bonaparte, the wonder of the world. Okay, Alexander the Great, Napoleon Bonaparte, he's tying them together. He came, he saw, he conquered Julius Caesar. So this guy is tying Julius Caesar, Napoleon Bonaparte, and Alexander the Great together in the ugliest Napoleon that I have ever seen in my life. But this is a period piece. It's really quite an amazing little, little find that I made many years ago. All right. Is this you have on the well, that's a guy named Caesar. You may have heard of him. He was a long time ago. Napoleon at Waterloo, complete with uh, various reflections. And we have a period piece of, of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, and if you're interested, if, if you get thirsty sometime, we have a few Napoleonic glasses that you might like to use, and a, a few down here as well. Wow. Oh, we, we just are starting. I know, we're 13, that is a plate 13 the, minutes into this. That's the plate with the imperial, imperial service. This looks like my kind of speed. There you go, that's yeah. a reproduction of Napoleon cigar. Yeah, yeah. The Hotel Bonaparte, not quite the Hotel California, but you know, it'll, it'll do. Suffrage Day. Yeah. And then in my, I, have, I won't show you too much of this, but this is. True, man. This is my, uh, this is the scene of the crime in here. If they, they say a neat desk is a sign of a sick, a sick man, so apparently I'm very healthy mentally because there's no issue uh, with that. But this is uh, part of my, of my library. That was when I was in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we celebrated the bicentennial of the French Revolution, and so they had me dress up as Napoleon. Mm. Mm. 
So now we'll we'll get out in the hallway. Here is my certificate of the Palm Academique and, and the medals themselves, and also my bronze star for my time in Vietnam 50 years ago this year. Wow. Yeah, it makes you feel old, I can tell you. That's because you are old. That's because I am old. Yeah. All right, I mean, my director has informed me we are running low on time, so we'll, we'll kind of move along here. This is the entryway. The, the bust that is used as the symbol of the International Napoleonic Society, uh, Empire Mirror, uh, uh, sort of things. Now we will wander into the, the, the boudoir. No, no place is safe. You see the, the entryway is covered with engravings. Here is the bedroom and we have even more engravings. <laughs> Cameron was overcome with emotion. The Empire Mirror. There's Alexander the Great. And of course, uh, for you, uh, Julius Caesar here as well. Wow. Caesar, Napoleon, and Alexander above the bed. Yep. Wow. And these are Empire lamps. These two here and the one over there. Wow. The one behind you right right there is also Empire. I'm guessing the uh, TARDIS telephone cover is not yours. <laughs> no, the, my wife is, is quite a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> and I just say, Doctor Who? Even the bathroom <laughs> is not safe. We have your Napoleon cigar over here. There's Caesar and Napoleon. There's Masena. And now before you totally break up, and there's, there's one of the cats. Okay, we don't have time for cats. We're running uh, out of time here. Okay. Now this is the we museum room. room. This is the heart of the collection. This is the real collection. Yeah. This, All of that was just the this preliminary. Yeah. This is a, a, a miniature of a statue that actually stands outside of uh, Brienne where he, he went to school. Here, of course, is Napoleon uh, and, 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 uh, on his horseback. And we have uh, stuff boxes galore over here, the rogues gallery, and stuff here to do with the, his, his exile and, and death and, and, and uh, resurrection, resurrection, as it were, uh, <laughs> given your current movie. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior Napoleon Bonaparte. Over, over here we have family. Napoleon is be playing chess, so forth and so on. Oops. And then over here we have oh, bed chamber. No, no, no. more Napoleonic snuff boxes, a, an 1840s a, a vase there, a beautiful triptych of Austerlitz in the background there. Some of these snuff boxes here in the front, these two, these three here are especially important. Uh, and then here we have more snuff boxes and porcelains. In our house, even the vacuum cleaner has a certain Napoleonic touch to it. I have one of those. The, uh, whatever you call it. And then some more of the library, of course. <sighs> wow. I am overcome. And there, my friend, you have it. You have now seen, oh, oh, of course, another Empire chandelier, complete with all this on the edge. There you have the cook's tour. I didn't get a chance to pull out some of the more interesting pieces, but there you have the cook's tour of the David Markham collection. And let this be a warning to you kids. This is what OCD looks like when it runs amok. <laughs>